Okay. I'll be the house soon. All right. I don't think we're going to have enough members for the board member meeting today. Jerry will be back. So I think I'll wait until Jerry gets back. There's nothing pressing anyway. Okay. That's okay with you guys? Yep. yep. That works. When is he supposed to be back stateside? He just told me. He's on early on. Um, Night, I believe. Yeah, okay. next week. Next week. Enjoying his Facebook tour. I think he's having too much fun. Yeah. He looked a little worn out, didn't he, Emilio? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he looked a lot worn out. We'll see if he can still communicate in English when he gets home. <laughs> All right, well, how about a quick safety moment? I'm going to talk about slips, trips, and falls because this is the time of year where a lot of that happens. I know I'm guilty of it. So one of the things I do is always make sure I'm going up and down the stairs, I hold onto the handrail. Watch where I'm walking, all that good fun stuff, especially those oldie moldies. Hey. Trust me, I've had two bad falls in the last four years. One I tore my shoulder up and one I cracked my head open. So ah. careful. Wet, good. Now wet feet on wood floors don't work very well. Right. <clears throat> So, it's just the variation on the older we get, the faster we were, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just, you know, just be careful. We don't want to find out somebody's in the hospital with a brain bleed or something. Or a torn shoulder. It's not fun. So what's everybody doing? How's Thanksgiving? Oh, Twice. I think I'm more stuffed than the turkey was. Hey, guys. <laughs> We had to have an encore of Thanksgiving because my sister-in-law had a migraine on the actual day, and so the following weekend we went back up there. Oh, geez. So did my wife. Well, I was having a turkey day anywhere between 20 to 30 people, and I think we had all of three, and then uh, two visitors that did for dinner, so a total of five people at the table, so. Nice. It, it was the uh, Thanksgiving day. Well, we had a total of 12, and I deep fried a turkey, as, as, as I am wont to do every year. And it turned out very well. And uh, you didn't burn down the house? Pretty good. No, I didn't burn down the house. I, I never have in the 20 years I've been deep frying turkeys. <laughs> Of legends. So how's it go? Thought out first. Thought out first. Thought out first. That's right. <laughs> I learned the hard one. That reminds me of the NASA story about they're testing windshields on airplanes and they fire a turkey at the windshield. And hey, this might be a legend, but it kept going through the windshield and it was supposed to not do that. Right? So they, they wrote in PL or something. I said, thaw the turkey before you fired the windshield. Quiet. So who's got their bikes put away for the winter already? No, I do. I do. <sighs> Absolutely. Uh, it's so we used to do that. It's 42 degrees here, which is cold for us, but still a variety. That, that's how they put salt on the road. And that's the best riding with. <laughs> we hit a high of 65 today here in the Bay Area. Prior to Thanksgiving, I couldn't ride it because of the smoke amplifier. That's all blown away, so it's good to be back on the road. We could always put a snow plow on the front of it like we did with berries in the picture. <laughs> Last I heard that your fire was 98% contained. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now it's 100% contained as of this morning. Outstanding. Yeah. 
it was very hard to breathe for a while, and I got these amp these nostril filters off Amazon. It's these little teeny things you stuff them up into your nostrils. It's just a little loop holding them together, and uh, they seem to help, but it's not quite the same as an N95 mask, which doesn't fit under a helmet. Not the same as a what? An N95 mask, you know, the whole the whole thing like this. Right. Does anybody know anybody that was affected by that? Fire, those fires. Well, <clears throat> my my wife has uh, her her former nanny when she was growing up lives in Paradise, and they were one of the few houses still standing. But they had to make a fast escape, you know, with all the flames and ashes to get a car. She sent some video down. Must be absolutely devastating to watch your, oh. your house going up. You look at the pictures, but you know the pictures don't do it justice. It, it's got to be just heartbreaking. Oh, oh, it's got to be heartbreaking and devastating. Yeah. yeah. District 5170 has put out some fundraising pleas about uh, helping folks who've been affected by the fires. So quiet. Michelle, how's your search going? Sorry, I'm muted. Um, it, it's it's pretty uh, quiet. I have to admit, I have been aggressive uh, with the uh, with the holidays. Up, up, you know, yep. in my industry, on a particular day, I'll count for the month of December for the most part. But the announcement of GM is letting my marketplace with a lot of uh, similar talent to that. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you guys getting an echo back when you hear when yeah. you're listening? Oh, it's, it's all break. It's all breaking up. I, I, it's hard to hear. Yeah, we're getting uh, echo on the breaking. I'm going to start muting everybody and I'll start unmuting one at a time. Just for grins and giggles. <laughs> I was muted until I unmuted. It's better now. Michelle, it was it was echoing even before you turned unmuted, so I don't think I don't Yeah. Because I normally log on my computer, but some reason I'm having trouble when I log on my app. Harold, where are you headed? I'm headed home. I'm about three minutes from the house. All right. And I can get out of darkness and these crazy drivers. I hate to say it, but I think it's Mike Emily's phone or connection. I cut it off. Just, uh, oh, there it's there it's back. No, oh, it's me. It's you. No, it's not you. iPhone two. I don't know who that is, and it won't let me mute it. That's not me, because mine is. Uh... Well, I'm on an iPhone, so let me try and undo. Let me try to log out and log back in. Because I don't normally log in on this phone. But it's not there right now. There's no echo. iPhone 2 is Harold. Oh, it's Harold? Okay. No echo? I don't hear an echo. Yeah, I think we're good now. I don't know who's, I don't know who's connection it is, though. It was probably Harold's connection feeding back because he can't control the mute while he's driving. No, true. No, but I can. I can mute you if I want. It's good well, to be the queen. Happened, it's happened to me before is um, I've logged in and accidentally logged in twice. 
And so what you have is your own voice or, or the conversation bouncing through two speakers or back and forth on the same speaker. And um, sometimes you don't realize you've done it. So whoever iPhone 2 is might be logged in twice. That helps attendance. Well, it doesn't look like <laughs> Harold's on anymore. No, because he said he was only three minutes for home, so he's probably at home and going inside. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have the echo anymore. Linda, have we looked at, I, I signed your spreadsheet for the technology committee. Have we looked at other conferencing tools as well? No, not yet. Jerry's got yeah. this one set up. Google Hangouts was like 10 bucks a month. I looked at that early on. Yeah. Um, Blue Jean. <clears throat> I don't know how I've much. I've looked at results with Blue Jean. We tried that when I was at Intigenix and I wasn't that impressed with it. I've looked at a lot of them, and Zoom really is the best one. Good to know. Thanks, Jerry. I, I agree. I honestly, I think you're, we've had it with ever. Somebody, some place is going to have some compatible. So I, I think that you're not going to find. <laughs> we can try a different one every month. <laughs> now I'm back. Hey. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> And we can see you a little bit better now. Yeah, I bet. I'm not in traffic. <laughs> that plaid blanket behind you looks like a scarf at first. <laughs> no, this is a scarf. <laughs> that's, just, that's just a blanket. Scarves in South Carolina? What's that? You use scarves in South Carolina? Oh, yeah, of course. We like to look the part of winter. <laughs> I was there in January and February 1985, and it was plenty cold in basic training. Oh, yeah. Well, it's uh, it was 42 when I got out of the truck. So mm -hmm. for me, that's chilly. <clears throat> Exercising outdoors with a wet T-shirt in that weather is not a good idea. <laughs> oh, now, hey, don't tell on yourself. <laughs> That was a lot of years ago. I thought your face looked familiar from trying to <laughs> you. Yeah. I, was, I was at a post office the other day. Oh, oh we've yeah. seen them all. <laughs> I think statute of limitations is gone on that one. No, huh? no. Not, no? Not, not on criminal law. Mm. I mean, not, not in a, criminal law. The laundry machines on those old World War II barracks, and I'd started the wash at the wrong <laughs> time and didn't have anything dry. When the drill sergeant says, get out of the house, you get out of the house, you know. Oh, blame it on the poor drill sergeant. The poor drill sergeants. Yeah. Poor. <laughs> yeah, it feels much better in here. Mm -hmm. I was just about to ask Terry, where was the wine? But he answered it for me. <laughs> I can't drink whiskey every night. Mm. Why not? It's not good for you. You're breaking your rules. Well, yeah. <laughs> Wine is just watered down whiskey. You know, that's all. <laughs> oh, okay. and watered down brandy. <laughs> good watering, though. <laughs> it works. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to have a drink tonight. What the? Yeah. See that see that, that cabinet behind hour. me? That that is a happy hour embodied in that cabinet behind me. We got a lot of stuff <laughs> down in the southeast. Um, that looks like happy hours. Hey, <laughs> For weeks Tom, um, are you strategically There you go. <laughs> Scott, Scott, zoom in on that cabinet a minute. Oh, that'll take so let's see what I can do here. If you can. What's that what's that bottle over your right shoulder? Looks like the blue one tequila, Terry. I don't know. Well, let's see. The stuff we're most tequila. Oh wow. Um oh, yeah, there's a patron in there. Come down, come down. Hmm. There's a number of scotches too. We saw that. And it looks like a bottle of Pappy. Just from the disc. Oh, I'm not that lucky, no. <laughs> I've, I've had a shot of that for a birthday party some years ago, and, you know, even even just a shot, that's plenty pricey. I thought that might be a Louis 16. 
Uh, we've got, um, I've actually got some Buffalo Trace, and that comes out of the same distillery as Pappy. Really? Yeah, I had to steal the bottle from my brother-in-law inadvertently. <laughs> inadvertently. <laughs> well, Terry, we took it back to Tahoe, and we were packing up things to go. Blanton's, and that's yeah. been hard to find lately. If you can find the Blanton's gold, yeah. You can't even find the regular Blantons here in, in Miami anywhere. And I went into a funny little store and there was a bottle. And you couldn't find it? It was the only one I found since I've been here. One bottle. Wow. What is that? It's a bourbon that has gotten really popular in the past four or five years. What's well, Pappy's? <laughs> that's a bourbon that's been popular forever. <laughs> okay, but I don't drink that stuff, so I don't know. <laughs> it's way overkill. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, wine is about as strong as I get. I've got a few non-traditionals here. <clears throat> You probably don't have this in your collection. Um, we got the the Rocknar. It's a Minnesota whiskey. Ooh. Ooh. Minnesota is not normally associated with that kind of thing, but it's pretty good. Is that a rye? That is, yeah, it is a rye. And then we've got a bourbon made in St. Paul. Oh, nice. Yeah. My friends weren't quite as fond as we did a, a whiskey tasting party once. We've done that once or twice in our place. And so there's, there's lots of room for um, trying lots of different things. Hey, I like your idea of leftovers. <laughs> These leftovers last a long time. What about scotch for your whiskey tastings? Where's your scotch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, my brother has the good taste to bring me scotch frequently for, for Christmas gifts. And I've got, um, oh, gosh. You're going to get the tour here. <clears throat> Got a Woodford Reserve. I got uh, the Japanese. The Suntory is good. The Yamazaki is even better oh, wow. to yeah. have that. Mm. We got. Uh, taste that. I'm taking notes. Trader Joe's single malt. That's not bad either. That is pretty good stuff. I've not had that one. Okay. And I've got an Irish in there. You're getting a world tour here. If you'll come on, uh, an Islay Scotch. Stuff. The Tum and Tool, Speyside. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Not much left in that one. Huh. And then we've got a uh, Lagavulin 16. Oh, that's a very nice one. That's. I think our next meeting ought to be at your house. I think it's next meeting. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Come on over, all the parties. <laughs> and then we've got the last keg there, which is, well, how old is this one? This is uh, 110 proof, I guess. It just, you know, <laughs> at that point, it's like, yeah, we're good. I thought happy hour you drink, not show. Well, you know, you got to come here to get it. <laughs> hey, Terry, you've got some competition. Yeah, he's got a pretty good collection. I got, I got to go see if I can find this bottle for him, though. I'll be back. I'm impressed, though, Scott. Okay. Mine never lasts that long. That I can <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and I've also got an Aquavit. A what? Aquavit? Licorice. All right. Here we go. Uh-oh. Here we go. Uh, let's see. I had to ask. We'll cabinet out. <laughs> be empty by the time he gets done. This is, this is the, the Norwegian Ancestry bottle here. Leuten Denea, that's uh, a, yeah. and we've actually got a story about this. So Norwegian Constitution Day, their equivalent of our fourth is um, mm -hmm. on uh, the 17th of May, Sitten de Mai, they said, that's the holiday. <clears throat> right. And we had a, a bunch of folks over at our house and we were, you know, pouring little shots of Aquavit too. This is when the kids were really small and somebody put their cup down on the floor so they could do something with both hands. Oh, I don't like where this is going. And then we hear this wow. rebel yell come out of my two-year-old. Just a yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what the story is, right? Oh yeah. 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 She kept yeah. it down, but uh, yeah, she she thought it was water or something like that. Just kind of walk over there, pick up the cup. 
<laughs> and it was straight Aquavit. <laughs> All um, I can say is Child Protective Services. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's my little Viking warrior there. <laughs> uh oh, Terry's back. We're in it's trouble. Find it, Terry. This this one's for Harold. I know he's had it before. Okay, all right. What? Military special. Oh, military as special. a matter of fact, I am. It's, yeah. It's eleven bucks a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> is that a class six thing every military base has them oh yeah huh. yeah i've never heard of it oh yeah yeah and, yeah. and this is the other one that i'm a little it, it, concerned you don't about. want to i'm a little concerned about being law enforcement but jeremiah weed i've heard of that one <laughs> <laughs> which you get it, it from Colorado? about marijuana on air or cdb or whatever that stuff is i don't think it has to <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably doesn't. The name says it all. Yeah, exactly. A California I'll let you Colorado. know how those work out. <laughs> There's actually kind of a good article about that this past summer. About uh, it was a little bit subjective, and you know, I think Motorcyclist magazine about cannabis and motorcycling, mm -hmm. and the relationship. And it's nowhere near as linear as alcohol. Really? Yeah. Yeah, the, the THC levels of the bloodstream, they yeah. had motorcyclists regularly tested for it and they continued to smoke up. And of course, there's a lot of Taco Bell food involved and pizzas and crap like that. <laughs> <laughs> Mud cheese? Yeah, it didn't correspond to the, the level of impairment anywhere near the way that alcohol does though. So when I teach classes, I often mention that study and I, I probably should bring the magazine in. It, um, you know, yeah. Studies like that are a little bit rare but it's uh, it's interesting to look at you know different kinds of impairment and how you figure out what you can and can't do. But, but it's always fun where you find volunteer for these studies. <laughs> I think the magazine's based in California. Probably no shortage of volunteers. There you go. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drink so many beers and then I'm gonna get on my bike and, and let you see how I am driving home. Well, if they're doing a closed core study, though, and it's done within the, yeah. the you know, the confines of, you know, some, some journalist like or something track. like that, and you get your bystanders, your first aid people. And, yeah. and, and big, like, like bowling out rubber bumpers down the lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's science. It'd probably hurt less to do it with cannabis the next day than it would to do it with the alcohol the next day. Well, oh, you're yeah. in California. It's legal, same as Canada. A crash is a crash. Yeah. True. I know. If you're on a Grom, on a little go kart track or something like that, it wouldn't be yeah. so bad. Yeah. Bumper cars. My has a Grom. He he dropped it early on. Mm. Um, Harold. Yeah. How many how many times have you dropped your motorcycle? Yeah, the weather's really nice. Uh, oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you take it off road, that's part of the adventure. You're expected to dump it. Well, it's your fault. You're not trying hard enough. I yeah. was in a party one time. Oh, no, 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 when, no, no, no. When Harold showed up and there were three oh, okay. people on his motorcycle. Okay. All right. He proceeded to fall over and crash. Now, fortunately, no. nobody was hurt. But that was only after the second 360. Well, that's and true. That's and true. I, kept, I kept it in the family. It was my wife and my daughter. <laughs> true. True. I'll give you that. And I looked good going down. Hmm. And we got some pictures or a video of that somewhere. I know we do. Somewhere. Hidden. Deep. Ooh. So is that one of those things that as long as there's no video evidence, you know, the story can get better and better with age. <laughs> yeah, that was on my, that was during my um, Harley Adventures days. We weren't spinning donuts for you. Hey, listen, don't desecrate good donuts. <laughs> no, we were going to a Christmas party. And, uh, and I had to demonstrate the proper technique for a very slow 360. And my kickstand got caught 
on some grass the second time around. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> I hadn't even had a drink yet. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. But I won't do that on the Beamer. Mm -hmm. You know what they say about adventure bike riders, right? Is that we meet them as people. They're all yeah. doctors and nurses, right? Yeah you, know, yeah, you know how we meet them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Harold, I still fail to understand how your kickstand got into the grass. <clears throat> I was so low. You know, what? one would have to understand the dynamics of turning a motorcycle and leaning it over. I don't know, Harold. I'm kind of a peg dragger. But as much as I drag my pegs, I never drag my pegs. Well, when you're off-road, you're in someone's backyard with grass, <laughs> and there's alcohol involved. Ah. You're just not going to cop to it, are you? You're just not going to nope. let <laughs> Nope. Nope. What kind of grass? <laughs> I had plenty of witnesses, unfortunately. Maybe that's why my wife doesn't ride with me very much now. <laughs> hey, yes. The bike handles better that way solo, though, doesn't it? <laughs> I took my wife with me to Tennessee once. We had those Sena, those Bluetooth things. Oh, and yeah. After a couple, three hours, I had to tell her my R2D2 is getting too talkative. I got to shut this thing off. Oh, she's yeah. kind of mad about that. Yeah. <laughs> bad move. That was a bad move. At least you get your wife it's when your truth. bike. Mine won't go on. Hey, you just remember, best accessory on the back of your bike, and you better not forget it. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty helpful for doing the, the zippers of my arrow stitch and so on. You just kind of like lift up, and she can reach back there. And... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> No, not silence again. Well, did you read what Harold or what Terry said about you? No. You should read the chat message. Oh, chat. Oh. <laughs> I, I can How do you do that? <laughs> I love you, Harold. You know that. <laughs> That's kind of what happy hour is for, isn't it? That's right. It's following the procedure. So you don't have a story about having somebody on the back of your motorcycle in a full formal gown? That's always a good sight. You gotta watch out for the... <laughs> I've ridden my bike with a tuxedo. Mm -hmm. I thought everyone did. <laughs> nope. I, have, but I don't own a tuxedo. Mm. You can rent one. Yeah. That's the nice thing about the arrow stitch is you can go full on James Bond underneath the arrow stitch there or commando, go. your choice. There you, know. you go. Oh, yeah. I've never done that. <laughs> no, commando no. Or tuxedo. <laughs> okay, conversation's going downhill. No. <laughs> Some things we don't need to know. That's the whole unsee, unsee, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, said, I need bleach for my eyes. <laughs> You know, we need we need to send a suggestion into Zoom that you can post a private image in the Zoom group chat. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> Snapchat module no. for Zoom. Well, Harold, when you're talking about Harley's, you know, I only rent Harley's. I don't buy them. But smart the, man. The, the <laughs> trick with the trick with renting Harley's is wow. you don't show the videos until after you get your security deposit back. <laughs> Good plan. I have owned two Harleys, one Yamaha, one uh, Honda XL, one Honda 50cc, and uh, 5750. You got a lot of bikes. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of cars. So, which do you prefer? You love my Harley. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Harley too. 
I do like the BMW like, uh, K1200, I think it is. The what? Uh, K1200 or K... Uh, no. number. But anyway, it's a 1200. The BMW. Uh, you can have... Uh, it's, it's pretty it's R1200. What is it? An R1200? R1200, there you go. It looks like a K to me. Yeah, but, oh, well, there's a K1600. No, it's a 1200 because at 1600, I couldn't reach the ground. So, I had a buddy trash us a K1600 because he was dicking around with the electronics on the handlebar. No. Oh, no. Yeah. Extremely fast, Mike. Yeah, I just got two 600s. There you go. <laughs> a whole lot safer. <laughs> All I know is if I want to go to Guatemala on a motorcycle, I'm taking a BMW bike, not a mm. Harley. So I love, see, see. I, I love the videos of these guys on the big ADV bikes in some place in Central America. And then yeah. some of the locals goes by on a little moped or scooter and passes them. Yep, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. So many stories. Here's my little resume I just threw in the chat. It's oh huge. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Good gosh. A little yeah. time in your hands? Well, it's just been a while, you know. <clears throat> I was at my brother's place in San Francisco, Chinatown last night, and he's trying to teach me how to play guitar. And there's so much muscle memory involved. I thought if I was trying to learn how to ride at my age now, you know, 53, right? Whatever. But you um, die. <laughs> guitar is a lot safer. You don't fall off yeah. the guitar. Yeah. It sounds it, terrible, but it just makes your fingers bleed. That's right. Carol, Carol. Well, you've never yes. asked me before because I can fall off the guitar with the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Linda, hey, don't don't make him prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, yeah, there's... you were about to say something. I said I start. I learned how to ride a motorcycle at age fifty-six. Wow. Did you really? Yeah. That's about when I, that's about when still I started. Still alive to talk about it. Very good. Yeah, I haven't. I, mean, I kind of dropped the Harley once, but I was going slow mo. So that's all part of the process. I ended up in the dirt. Oh, good. You're lucky. <laughs> it's when you end up on the pavement. Cool. As long as it wasn't the pavement. No, but I broke my rule on the road when I was tired and I took the driveway too sharp. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. One of my students in Minnesota was, I think, 80 years old when he was just learning how to ride. No because way. his wife bought him a gold wing and said they should start touring. And wow. he did great in class. He got a perfect score on the test. He rode really well. So it's like, who's to say a gold wing isn't a great first bike at 80 years old? I don't know the rest no. of the story. No. Uh, it wouldn't be my choice for a first bike, for sure. Yeah. But, oh. It's an outlier. At 80 <clears throat> years old, it wouldn't be my choice on two wheels at all. Mm -hmm. No way. Oh, none of us are there yet. So He's it's probably a, a pretty wish. spry 80-year-old, though, so you never know. Yeah, yeah, you don't know if he's still alive, either. Yeah. Because hey, I don't know the end of the story, but he rode really well in class. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, a dreamy something-year-old lady out there riding with motor maids, been riding her entire almost her entire adult life, and she's still riding. Is that one in AMA, right? Uh, maybe. Yeah, there's a article toward the front of the latest magazine. I don't know if it said what, she was. What's motor, motor maids? Is that a local group, then, Linda? It's no, it's an it's the yeah. oldest it's women motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna see if I can find that issue. <laughs> I was talking with a fellow earlier today, and his goal—he's about 68. His goal is to buy the brand new Goldwing with the automatic transmission. So I related wow. uh, Rory and Judy's uh, success story on their ride, in particular going up Mount Evans and coming down Mount Evans with that automatic, and uh, they. They had no problem. Wow. T 
10 speed automatic. So it's an automatic. Is on the it bike. really 10 it's speed? automatic in the car? Uh, the Honda, the motorcycle. Yeah, it's automatic, the same as an automatic in a car? Well, I don't know if it's identical, but it's a, it's a 10 speed automatic. And you can either let it do its own thing or you can punch buttons and upshift and downshift. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know there were automatic bikes. Brand, brand new this year. Oh, yeah. My spider is, it, well, it's a semi automatic. You shift up, but it'll automatically downshift. Oh. I rode that, uh, the Africa Twin DCT this spring in, in uh, Tennessee. And they I was really around. impressed with it. Yeah. That's a good bike. My yeah. brother in law has the Africa Twin, but he has the uh, regular transmission. The manual. So. I never once wished that I would have got the the regular shifter, which surprised me. I'm the only fool in our gang who flies back east from the west coast just to go riding with those guys for a weekend, but I've been doing it for a bunch of years, so it's kind of an expectation now. How far back east? Uh, we go into towns in Tennessee and ride around Deals Gap, Blue Ridge Parkway and whatnot. We rent this big ramshackle lodge that sleeps maybe a dozen and do big family style meals. Bunch of us guys have known each other for over, you know, over a decade now. Have you uh, ridden the Foothills Parkway? Oh yeah, yeah. That's well, great. That's part I mean, of the... the reason I ask is because in our Goldwing meeting last night, they were talking about uh, they've just opened up two new sections of the uh -huh. Foothills Parkway. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it, it's been working on it for about 40, 500 years, but uh, <laughs> they've got the two new ones open. They've still got two more to go. Yeah, a friend, a friend within the group, he sent a big email with tons of map attachments just a couple weeks ago because they're planning for next May. Right. I'm trying to use that as leverage. It's like, if you guys want me to come back, somebody's got to hire me. So <laughs> I thought I was a kid where to go. That's how that works. That new section, where is it near? What? Where is it near, that new section you're talking oh, it, about? It's on the Foothills Parkway. It's on the western side of yeah. the parkway. Oh, oh. So yeah, I haven't that. seen the maps of it, so I don't know exactly. But they were explaining okay. it last night at, at the... Old wing meeting. It goes out on the western side, Harold. Huh. Something I'm, new to explore. I'm going to look for it here so I can fire the link with all the maps and stuff off to, uh, I guess, Linda, can I fire that off to you and you can distribute it to anybody who's interested? Good. Yeah, I can, put, I can attach it to or put a link <clears throat> um, in the email I send when the video's up online. Cool. Yeah, new Foothills okay. Parkway okay. Extension. Okay. Why does the California guy know about this? I don't quite get that part. <laughs> You're better connected than the rest of us. Oh, that's just flattery. <laughs> but it Did works. It work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where does he say it is here? It's um, all kinds of backtrack stuff. He's got a big chunk paragraph. Uh, much more twisty, slightly steeper grades than the western portion we've been riding to get to the Dragon. Because we normally ride foothills to get to the Dragon. It's kind of like going going around a U-shape. Right. Okay, several bridges, engineering marvels. Da -da -da. Yeah, he's got all the maps on the attachment there. Runs from MP18 at the west end, Wallen, where it connects to the existing 18-mile stretch we always ride over the dragon to MP34 at the eastern end at Highway 321, Weirs Valley in National Park Service land. So does that make sense to you, Keith? Have kind of knowing yes, the area? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. I know right where Weirs oh, Valley well. is, and I know right where MP35 is. Okay. I just sent that off to Linda to your Gmail, and so you'll Excellent. see Thank kind you. of a ton of attachments. Sure. It's good to have local friends in the area because then we know how fast we can get away with usually. <laughs> <laughs> I can't ride that like that in California because I don't think California is nearly dependent on tourism as, as I perceive Tennessee to be. 
there was a Rotarian out of Marysville who led a rotary ride, uh, a fellowship ride, oh, I'm going to say seven years ago. He was on a B storm. Mm -hmm. And wow, he could take those corners. Uh, he, he would leave everyone behind, but the Harleys would catch up to him on the straightaways. Yeah. That's about right. Especially you got a screaming eagle in there or something like that. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> Stage two. Yeah, one of those trips I had uh, a modified road king that I borrowed from another friend who lives out that way. It's got the floorboards, right? So it's not really designed for cornering, but if you hang off on the inside like a monkey, it'll actually go. <laughs> <laughs> scrape, scrape. Oh yeah, that's just the music. That's music. My, my bike, it's all scraped on, right underneath the, the boards. Sure. All four boards are all scraped. Mm -hmm. And then on the Dragon, on the last day, I lost part of the shift linkage because it vibrated off. <laughs> Fun times. Are you still friends? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that guy doesn't ride anymore. The guy who owns that Harley, or owned that Harley, is the one who crashed the K1600 GTL and totaled it. Mm. Ooh. Ooh tore the bike in half, tore the front end off of it. Whoa. He was okay, fortunately, but wow. he went off side of uh, just a medium curve because he was playing around with the electronics. And as the bike was going across the grass, the front wheel caught in uh, a drainage culvert to the open top of a drainage oh. culvert. And so the bike was just a yard sale for like a hundred yards, it's crazy. Oh. Oh, it sounds like okay. something that could go in the tree of shame. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. What a waste. Yeah, I drove that bike, too. He, he let me try that out after I'd been up uh, two up. The, the R2-D2 moment, that was, with, uh, that was my, with my wife on the Harley, on the Road King. And after I'd kind of proven that I could handle the Road King without crashing it, he let us take out the K1600 for the afternoon. And I honestly didn't like it as well as I liked the Harley. Really? Yeah, it was weird. It just it didn't didn't feel right. Maybe it didn't have the sound. Well, and that bike was deafening. We needed earplugs just to ride it. And later on, on the Blue Ridge or something like that, I waved around my buddies because they were all on sportier bikes. And I thought, geez, I'm holding them up. And they said, no, 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 no. You weren't going slow. We had to get around and <laughs> knocked off our bikes by the sound of the pipes of the Harley. <laughs> wow. Tunnel, tunnels and loud pipes were made for each other. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been through the Eisenhower Tunnel and done four or five power shifts. You, you're missing out on a lot. Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah, Trying that's to the echo chamber, huh? He likes that one. I've done that. How many yeah, people? I'll slow, down. I'll slow down to about 20, 20 miles an hour when I enter the tunnel. And I don't want to tell you what I'm doing when I come out of it. But <laughs> I usually back off real fast because they have possibility of uh, cameras and, oh, yeah. vegetables and, and uh, vehicles with flashing lights on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. He's got their Christmas shopping done. Huh? <laughs> uh, done. You got, you got three months, right? Don't everybody uh -huh. raise You got to be kidding. So the biggest <laughs> question is, how many people do you have to buy for? Five, six, One. Seven. 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 <laughs> Got a new grandbaby. I already got her done. Oh, yeah. yeah I, think, I think the big kids are harder than the little kids. That's right. Grandchildren are easy. Well, especially when they don't even talk or walk or crawl yet. 
My 15 year old yeah, is asking for. Here's a cardboard box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you're talking. I just need to get my. Yeah. Refrigerator yeah. box. Yeah. Refrigerator box. Those were awesome. Well, we used to move a lot when we were kids, and every time we moved, my mom used to save all the boxes. And one one house had this really steep hill, and she took all the boxes and taped oh, them cool. all together. And we just slid right down the boxes the whole year. Oh yeah. Great. Best toys. And we got right until it rained, rain. and they all got wet. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, oh. Scott, are you renting out your bikes? Is that what you're doing? I just listed them. I, you know, I, I haven't had anybody rent them yet. I priced them a little on the higher end. But I was thinking about it. It's like, you know, each of these bikes is worth maybe 3000 at sits. They're no kind of trophies, although I like them. And um, I thought, well, why not? Because until I rent them out, I can't rent other people's bikes through this same network. Um, How many bikes like, you got? Uh, got the two. There's a couple other backyard bikes in the neighborhood that I've seen the need fixing, but I can't justify spending the time and money on those until I get the next job. So it's out there. Cool. It's an interesting concept though. For every hundred bucks you charge, you keep, you get 70 of it if somebody rents your bike because the organization, this twisted road, they get you know the the thirty percent cut, but they're also doing something in by way of insurance and the network and kind of a the the renters get to rate the person you know they're renting it from, and vice versa. So it's kind of one of these things, a little bit like Airbnb. And how do you handle? They insurance? also get advertising or anything of that nature. Do they do advertising? Or do they get proceeds from advertising or anything of that nature? Um, <clears throat> I don't think so. I think they just get it on the rentals. Huh. What's the name of it? Hmm? What is the name of it? Twistedroad.com. Both of the URLs in the chat, they've got the, the top level. And so you can see what else is out there for rental. And that way, if you're going on a business trip or something, and you know maybe it's a little bit rural or it's not a big enough place to have a motorcycle rental agency, private parties can rent this way so it's a hey, nice I wonder, I wonder if they give us a finder's fee as a uh, fundraiser for our e-club if we uh Ooh, good people their direction they do referrals they do referral fees and so if you get other people into the network then you can get discounts on your next rental with them but i guess you could contact them and see if they do something else with the club probably <laughs> would Michaela, you want to try contacting them? I might. I got time. Yeah, cool. Thank you. <coughs> Twisted what? Twisted? Twisted Road. Twisted it's in road. the chat. Yep, okay, I got it. Hack off the back end of the URL to find, um, you know, what else is up there. And they've got an FAQ. So just right after twistedroad.com forward slash FAQ. And it's got the rest of the story there. They've been pushing pretty hard on um, uh, motorcycles and misfits podcast. Yeah, that's one of the one of their sponsors. Hmm. What what happens if somebody wrecks your bike? Um, it's covered up to fifteen thousand U.S. by the by the agency, but then TwistedRoad.com would go after the renter for the damages. <laughs> so the renter has to have insurance too. Okay. Do they buy that through Twisted Road or? Uh, just your regular, you know, your progressive or USA or whatever you have. Okay. Gotcha. Huh. Yeah, it's an interesting model. And if, when I first heard about it, I was real skittish to do it, but I've heard good things about it, including from those folks at that podcast out of Santa Cruz. Yeah, I just I'm not get, my... get, get a bike that wasn't very well maintained. It's not like you've got an enterprise or a national, uh, you know, mechanics crew taking care of the thing. Right, exactly. Who's, who's got insurance with USAA? I do. I do. 
Still, I'm thinking about going back to progressive because you get multiple no, motorcycles. No, no, no. USA doesn't do so well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have a brand name, well, I'm biased because I'm an old state guy. It's true. So, but when you have a brand name wreck on a bike, it's better if you have like progressive or if you have all state. Anybody else is not going to guarantee you OEM parts. That's the what? Well, I had USAA for 18 years on my motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And I sold that they won't motorcycle do motorcycles and yeah. bought a new one. And when I went to reinsure the new one, they say they won't do it, they won't do it anymore. And they stopped. What? They stopped no. doing all the. They put you with on motorcycles. You yeah, we had them. We had them too. We had yeah. the same issue. They, they farm out to Progressive. Actually, USAA uses Progressive in some areas. Yeah, yeah. I was do. with Progressive for decades, and I really liked them. They took good care of me. Dairyland is very strong. Yeah. Yeah. Dairyland does an excellent job. Well, I just added a second bike to my progressive policy, and it was like I got two for one. They, exactly. My, my premium actually went down to insure two bikes. That's with yeah. Allstate. They figure you only use one at a time. If you have two bikes with Allstate, it's like you pay only for one. Yeah, it's progressive. Not like USAA. No. Progressive is one of the only companies when you have a multi vehicle discount, the discount is, is actually added up. Most companies only give you up to 30% or whatever. With Progressive, 35%. In bikes, you can add all of that up and, and pay a very minuscule amount, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Yeah, I, I want to go back to them, and particularly with renting them out and stuff, and think, well, it's a pretty good time no. to do it. Certainly. Especially if I pick up some of these beat up backyard bikes here in Alameda and you know get them back on the road. So the best time to buy a bike is when it's not really for sale because it's just in somebody's way. Just make sure it's not a salvage bike. Exactly. Yeah. Those insurance companies don't like salvage bikes. Well, that's another thing with all the You can have a salvage bike. A twisted road won't let you list a salvage though. Right. Sorry, well, what's for a good a, reason. What's a salvage bike? It's a bike that's been wrecked, and the insurance company bought it back from the insured. They totaled out the bike, so the bike may have frame damage, for example, and they'll resell it. They have to sell it as a salvage bike, um, and it, it's, it's not structurally sound as a new bike or a regular bike would be. Well, that's are they, the insurance company insurable? Have said it's been scrapped. They're, no, they're, they're insurable. They're insurable, but there are strict limitations to the insurability. And there are some companies, the better companies, will not insure them. A, a, so lot, you, of them you will say, to... a lot of them will say that you, you can't insure them because the framework should have been scrapped or right. you know, some of the key right. components should have been scrapped. Correct. And they don't want any liability because yeah, it's the, a big you know, liability it's issue. It's like yeah. a helmet. The minute it's been dropped, you know, they're saying, well, you know, it's been dropped. Correct. Correct. It's also like having a tainted title. If you try to resell right. something with a salvage title, most people either won't buy it or they'll give you, you know, ten cents on the dollar. On the dollar. Exactly. Yep. Is, is a salvageable bike or salvaged bike insurable? You can insure it. it can be insured, but but the title um, will say salvaged. Yeah. They'll yeah, give so you. It's really just reliability then, as, as a price. You to, can't, uh, rarely can you get it by state. It's only liability. It yeah. varies by state. Yeah. Gotcha. The the problem is the more the more uh, farther away it gets from whoever had the accident or the incident you don't know what actually happened and how it was properly, if it was properly repaired. Right. Well, that was like the big warning after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, they, some not so reputable people were selling cars under salvage titles. Oh, yeah. 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 Huh. yeah. All they did was dry them out in a little bit of Febreze and off the That's off. right. When I was at the St. Paul College to be an auto mechanic back 1986 to 88, we had some flood cars that were donated to the vocational school for the auto mechanic program. And one was this beautiful Trans Am, you know, it was a really late model and all that. But the electronics were sketchy because the whole damn thing had been underwater. 
<laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be pretty sketchy. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even even if you completely redid the whole wiring harness, it would still have to be marked as salvageable. Absolutely. Salvageable. Yep. It's not like that James Bond model where it's designed to be a submersible. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. You can't see James Bond in a Trans Am. That's just not right. Yeah. No. No. Hmm. All right, you guys. Terry, you want to do the four-way test? Or would you? <laughs> just uh, I don't know. Maybe. Linda, I found that article, by the way. Can you scan that and send that, too? Yeah, we will do. Okay. We'll attach all of it at the... Sounds good. All right, of the things we think, say, or do, number one is it the truth. truth. Number truth. two, are all, all, all concerned. All concerned. <laughs> will it build goodwill and better friendship? Number four, will it be beneficial to all, all, all concerned? And number and five, will it be, will fun? It be fun? Will it be fun? <laughs> Most of be fun. safe riding or all of the above. No, no board meeting. We'll do that when Jerry's back. Um, next okay. week, we're going to have from Greenville, Emilio, where Emilio's at, um, Quiverful Adoption Agency. It's not motorcycle related, but I think you're going to like what these ladies have to say, and they're really excited to be doing their first rotary presentation. That's fun. Okay. Cool. Merry well, Christmas, everyone. Safe riding. Thank you. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye. Hey, See Emilio. Ya. Emilio. He's gone. Okay. Send bye him an bye. email. Bye, guys.